they're working no issues, and they are ready for launch on time at 21 minutes after the hour. On the range side of the house, we're launching out of Kennedy Space Center headed due east. Range has made clear that made sure that everything is clear for us. There's nobody in the hazard areas. And then finally the weather. Late evening at Kennedy Space Center. Looks like gorgeous weather. We've got 90% probability of good weather. In fact, we don't see anything coming up on the horizon in the next five and a half minutes. So right now, Falcon 9, Inmarsat, the range and the weather are all go for launch. Today, SpaceX is launching Inmarsat 5 Flight 4, or as you might have seen on their Twitter feed, I-5F4. It's on behalf of our customer, Inmarsat. Inmarsat was originally set up in 1979 by the International Maritime Organization to enable ships to stay in constant contact with the shore and to call for help in an emergency, no matter how far out to sea. Today, Inmarsat's customers cover many different sectors, with the common thread being the need to communicate in places where terrestrial telecom networks are unreliable or simply cannot reach. Inmarsat 5F4 is the fourth satellite in the Global Express Constellation, the world's first globally available high-speed mobile broadband service. As the only operator of a global KA band network, Inmarsat created the Global X platform to enable communities across the world to benefit from the emerging digital society. Inmarsat's GX network entered global commercial service in December 2015. Inmarsat 5 Flight 4 adds further capacity to the network as well as in-orbit redundancy that further upgrades the reliability and resilience of Inmarsat service offerings. The first four Global Express satellites, including today's Flight 4, were constructed by Inmarsat's partner, Boeing Network and Space Systems. We're just inside T minus three minutes. We're continuing to count down. We have completed LOX loading on the first stage. You can see the Gox plumes coming off of the second stage. The erector is reclined about a degree and a half away from the Falcon 9. It'll move all the way back at liftoff. Next major event's coming up at T minus two minutes. We'll finish liquid oxygen loading on the second stage. At T minus one minute, you'll hear the call start up. That's where the flight computer takes over control of the countdown, culminating in ignition of the nine Merlin engines just before T minus zero. At T zero, when we make sure we're at full power, the flight computer will command liftoff. Falcon 9 will then begin heading to space. So right now, it's coming up on T minus two minutes and counting. Let's listen to the countdown of Falcon 9 with Inmarsat. Stage two locks closed out. Falcon 9 is on eternal power. I wonder what's in that contract, you know? Stage two locks closed out. All right. They muted, they muted the other thing. He feels like they're saying, Falcon the Cubs win the pennant, the Cubs win the pennant, nice. <laughs> Vehicles in self line. Stage one, stage two, cry here, I'm scared. Eating the cost to keep a customer? If you can link it, man. Thank you, Captain Fingers, for joining you to have your vehicle. Turns out it's slightly more complicated than that. I know, right? FTS, and now it's AFTS is ready for launch. Yeah, the first stage is not going to land. The first stage is not capable of landing here. AFTS is go for launch. PC, verify F9 is in startup. Falcon 9's in startup. 
All ground side gas closeouts are complete. Stage one, stage two, press for flight. LDs go for launch. Just over T plus one minute into flight, we're hearing nominal callouts. The Merlin engines have throttled down in preparation for passing through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle experiencing maximum air dynamic pressure. A minute and a half into flight. We're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. The Merlin engines are throttled back up to full power. Trajectory performance continue to look nominal. Chill has begun. You hear the call out, MVAC chill has begun. Liquid oxygen Vehicle's now on top of the turbo pump for the second stage engine, chilling it in as we prepare for stage separation and then ignition of the upper stage engine. Next major event coming up in less than 30 seconds is going to be main engine cutoff, shutdown of the nine Merlin engines, followed by stage separation and ignition of the second stage engine. Plus three minutes and 15 seconds into flight. A good stage separation. Ignition of the upper stage engine. Next event coming up in about 15 seconds. Fairing separation. Thanks. I think that's T plus three minutes, 50 seconds into flight. You saw a good fairing separation. We heard confirmation over the countdown net. 
Second stage engine continues burning. This will go until about T plus eight minutes and 38 seconds, at which time we would have shut down Bermuda in a parking signal. orbit around the Earth. Second stage engine is on the first of two planned burns. As I said, the first one will put us in a parking orbit, followed by a second burn about 27 minutes into flight that would put Inmarsat into a geostationary transfer orbit followed shortly afterwards by spacecraft separation. Performance continues to look nominal on the upper stage. Chamber pressures look good, engine looks good, trajectory looks good. T plus five minutes into the flight of Falcon 9 carrying Inmarsat 5 F4. Performance continues to be nominal. We're heard heading currently east out of Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, heading for the first parking orbit, which will be followed by a second burn at about T plus 27 minutes into the transfer orbit. We'll be covering both burns and spacecraft separation during the webcast. T plus six minutes, performance continues to be nominal. About two and a half minutes left in this first burn of the upper stage engine. As a reminder, in webcasts in the past, we've also been watching first stage at this time. But in this case, without landing legs or grid fins, the first stage is not being targeted to return to land or the drone ship. So today, we're staying with the second stage all the way to orbit. Second stage continues to follow the nominal trajectory. T plus seven minutes into flight, MVAC engine continues working. Everything continues to look good for Falcon 9 headed to the low Earth parking orbit. T plus eight minutes into flight. We're just over half a minute away from the planned shutdown of the MVAC D engine on the second stage. Trajectory looks nominal. Propulsion continues to look nominal. And when we get shut down, we'll wait and listen for the call from the guidance engineer letting us know how the orbit looks. Signal expected. Review to track now. 
We've had shutdown of the upper stage engine right on time. Trajectory looks good. It looks like we have a good parking orbit. So this completes the first of two burns of the second stage engine. Now we're currently going through a coast phase. Is the second stage with Inmarstat still attached? Coasts around the Earth, over Africa, we will reacquire telemetry and follow the second burn of the upper stage engine. That'll be at about T plus 27 minutes. So the plan right now is we'll continue the webcast, but we'll come back with status updates starting at T plus 26 minutes. And in the meanwhile, we'll leave you with this view of the animation. The second stage heads towards Africa, successfully into the low earth parking orbit, preparing for the second burn of the upper stage coming up in just under 17 minutes and 10 seconds. So with that, that'll end our commentary. We'll be back at T plus 26 minutes. Bermuda loss of signal expected.
phone acquisition of signal. Welcome back to the webcast. John Insperger here at Hawthorne. We're at T plus 26 minutes and 20 seconds into the flight of Falcon 9 carrying Inmarsat 5 Flight 4. Currently the second stage with Inmarsat attached is approaching the equator off of Africa. This is where we're going to light the upper stage engine. This burn's going to last about a minute. Currently we are pulsing small cold gas settling thrusters to make sure the propellant's at the bottom of the tank right at the inlet to the engine. So we're waiting to watch for the upper stage engine ignition coming up in just about 10 seconds or so. You might hear the applause in the background. MVAC engine has relit. This is the start of about a one minute burn. You can see from the velocity meter on the screen, we're adding in thousands of meters per second to bring the Inmarsat spacecraft from the parking orbit up to the desired geostationary transfer orbit. As I said, this burn will last about a minute total. Then we'll wait and hear how the orbit looks. Tank pressures are looking good. Propulsion is nominal. Trajectory looks good. Maybe go. We've had main engine cutoff. We're waiting to hear, we've had SECO, I should say. The MVAC engine is shut down. We're waiting to hear from guidance how the orbit looks. It's a good transfer orbit. You heard launch director call out just now, a good transfer orbit. So that completes the second of the two planned burns of the upper stage engine. You can see the nozzle now cooling back down to the background temperature of space after it burned for the one minute to add enough velocity to move us into the desired transfer orbit. Now spacecraft separation is currently planned for just under T plus 32 minutes. So we're gonna pause our coverage for the moment, but we'll be back for the deployment of the Inmarsat spacecraft uh, just before T plus 32 minutes.
plus 31 minutes and 27 seconds since launch. We're waiting for the final major event of this afternoon's mission, the separation of the Inmarsat spacecraft from the Falcon 9. So we're going to just listen along with everybody as we wait for a call out of separation. We've had confirmation of spacecraft separation. Uh, looks like, unfortunately, we were not able to bring the video to you, but we did hear the voiceover from SpaceX Launch Director out at uh, Launch Complex 39A. So that's going to bring an end to our webcast. It's been a great afternoon evening out at Kennedy Space Center. We counted down with excellent weather, launched right on time. The first stage did great. The second stage went through two burns just as planned. And now we've topped it off with the separation of Inmarsat 5 Flight 4 spacecraft for our Inmarsat customer. So we've had good orbits, good separation, all you can ask for today. And so we just want to end today with our thank yous to NASA and the Air Force for range support, the Federal Aviation Administration, and of course our Inmarsat customer. We invite you to follow us on our Twitter feed as well as Instagram and our webpage at SpaceX.com. And finally, thanks for letting us share the mission of Falcon 9 with you. Until our next webcast, goodbye. <laughs>